Yeah, no matter what our gender is, no matter our political preference, no matter our personal preferences, there's something about all of us that is exactly the same. There's an intelligence within each of us that's powerful, vast, inconceivable, and full of the capacity to be of benefit to all. So regardless of if you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're in the United States, I don't know what the other political systems are, whether you're male, female, or maybe you don't go by either of those, whether you like to move and dance or whether you like to lay around on the couch and watch movies. There's something about us that's totally incredible and exalted regardless of who we are. And we can introduce ourselves to our amazing intelligence through stopping thinking just for a moment. And to stop thinking, it's a very simple way to introduce ourselves to open intelligence. That which is looking through your eyes, that knows you are sitting here, that knows your preferences. Um, you don't have to turn it on. You can't turn it off. Even when sleeping, you still have the same open intelligence. When you looked in the mirror when you were a small child and when you look in the mirror now, that same intelligence. So our open intelligence is primary. It's fundamental to all of the experience that we have, whether we call the experience positive, negative, or neutral. So first and foremost, intelligence. From intelligence, then we know all of the data. Data is a term we use to encompass thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places, things. So, and typically we've been giving them connotations, negative, positive, or neutral. Also in this training, a fundamental aspect is that open intelligence, that intelligence that we identified when we stopped thinking, is inseparable from all the data. Yeah, try to take your thoughts out of your intelligence. Try to pull your emotions out of this vast intelligence. Try to separate the sensations, and it can't be done. They're inseparable, like the color blue in the sky is inseparable. So a very basic but powerful way of seeing reality as it is. Open intelligence inseparable from data, and open intelligence primary. So the data are a ceaseless flow. Like if you just check in throughout your daily experience, the, the, the thoughts, the emotions, sensations are a seamless flow. They're quite unpredictable. They're quite random. One minute we could be feeling restful and at ease. Maybe we've been doing our favorite exercise or movement therapies and it feels nice. We feel like the breathing's working well. The system's running properly, our skin is nice and clean, and our head is clear. And it's like, wow, that's really cool, I like that. It must be because I did the right things today. And then all of a sudden you may be at the beach and you have a painful memory come up. Or you see something happen on the beach that's um, kind of startling, and jarring. Or you watch some of these films and you see some of the actual violence that has occurred and that is occurring. And then you just forget about your whole movement practice and you're faced with now, it could be anger, hatred, resentment, regret. And, and just in an instant how it just shifted. So in this training we have a simple practice of returning to that fundamental intelligence for short moments many times to allow data to be as it is so that we can respond beneficially to each and every circumstance. It doesn't exclude us doing the things we like doing. It doesn't exclude taking action, being involved in political systems, making a change. It includes all of our daily activities but this open intelligence is a more comprehensive way of looking at the big picture. 
we can easily consider then back to the example of if you are seeing all of this violence and hatred being displayed so publicly that we could really easily collapse and probably you could either get more angry and try to join in I mean you can just feel that impulse I was too watching a bit of this movie and you could immediately feel the impulse of like wow that's so unjust that's so unfair and just this charge you could say to stand up and speak out against something that we know is not right for people to be harming one another we know that that's not natural it's not right it just doesn't feel right so there is definitely a charge but in the practice of short moments of open intelligence repeated many times we know how to harness the energy from that charge you could say rather than now calling it hatred or activism or anything by relying on open intelligence that which is primary we see that it's our beneficial capacity we become clearer we have more discernment more skillful means and being effective in sharing harmony unity power power for all the people not just a few so you, you just become more and more clear and um, this happens gradually it's not like it, for me, it, it didn't happen overnight, but I did recognize how I had been indulging my data, how I had been avoiding or replacing. And the fourth option of clarifying, letting data be as they are, to really know them as this beneficial energy, despite their negative or positive or neutral description. So in short moments of not describing, for me that was a very helpful way to just get in touch with my open intelligence and learn to rely on it. And something that was helpful was relying on open intelligence, getting to know it when it was easy. When I was doing things I liked doing, being out in nature, just on a peaceful walk on the beach or in the mountains, looking at the vast landscape. So just there too, allowing all my positive descriptions to be as they are. Just allowing them too to flow on by and seeing that, you know, I can't hold on to them. I could be in this very peaceful, serene environment and again, a painful thought comes in or a sensation or, you know, sometimes trekking up in the mountains and it's so awesome and amazing and then you start to feel altitude sickness and then you're like, it, nothing looks nice and serene then. You just feel like, get me out of here, I gotta get back to sea level. <laughs> so you see it, it's just so unpredictable and I mean this is such a practical tool that will support you in any situation you find yourself in and engaging in the things you love doing, being in challenging situations, having the voice, a clear voice to speak up and stand out against, well not against, but just you know, saying how it really is. We, we learn to share our experience of saying, look, I'm not, I'm no longer a victim of my hatred, of my, of any of those data that used to really propel me to react. Like we start to see there's a responsivity available to us, um, an ability to use our mind, speech, body qualities and activities for the benefit of all. So for me, the descriptions just become more and more a reminder that they are my capacity to be of great benefit to myself and others. And that might include taking care and doing the things I like to do to move, but to see that if I don't have that in my day, my well-being is not dependent upon if I get to do my morning exercise or, or not. Like I could be in a challenging circumstance and also see right in that circumstance that there is a relaxed potency even amidst a very challenging circumstance. So more and more we are stable and grounded. Complete mental and emotional stability available at all times in all circumstances. I mean that that is something that you would want. 
and all situations, really. I mean, we don't want to feel at the whim of situations, circumstances. We want to feel uh, capable and confident. So, um, I would just say you know, the effort making change and you know, how many people are on this planet, I don't know, billions now. Um, it's like, you know how each drop of water makes an amazing contribution to the, the ocean. It's made up of all of these drops. And each one of us getting to know our open intelligence identity, that we are not just the data, a package of data, that we are nothing other than beneficial agency. It's just very attractive and it's our natural way of being, so it's not so hard for others to actually see there is another way of relating to every moment. And um, I just see within a global community, people really are becoming so clear and making very powerful changes in their own lives, which then affect those around them, their family members, and then the community starts growing just organically. Uh, we have community and people participating in this training all over the world, on all continents. A lot of people are just joining in online, listening to the free media that we have available, the, the free books to download. The, um, there are trainings every day offered on our website, a video conference, teleconference. So people just sharing this empowered way of relating, and we gain confidence in that. So. Yeah, rather than thinking, oh my God, how will I, how will he, you know, provide a, a harmonious planet, just, just continue on with your own empowerment. Empower all of your data. You know, that, that urge to really get in there and just fix it. But we, we see where that leads, you know, marches and protests and so forth. They only have a certain amount of impact that's sustainable. So we need to see in ourselves, okay, how can I completely empower myself regardless of my data sets? And then you'll more and more see how to bring that into your local communities and globally. And, uh, you know, we have all of us doing it together, so we know that we're not in it alone either. And, um, you know, the, like I was sharing, it doesn't exclude any if you like to do, if you like to sit quietly each day, or if you like to stretch and do yoga and these kinds of things, fine, but just recognize that open intelligence is primary. Open intelligence is informing your movements and it's informing what you need in that moment or what you think you need, or it's, it's your open intelligence that's primary. So we can do whatever we'd like to do. If you feel moved to have a glass of wine with your friends and God forbid you would smoke anything. <laughs> if you do, rely on open intelligence whilst engaging in whatever you're engaging in. You know, we're not giving a, a set of rules saying you can't recognize your exalted nature if you're smoking and drinking. I mean, open intelligence doesn't exclude anything you would just naturally more and more see what would be of benefit to the, you and those around you. Like knowing instinctively what would be best. And if you say you did smoke something or drank something and then you afterwards you're like, well maybe that was perfect or it wasn't, you have another opportunity to emphasize the intelligence that's primary, that's fundamental. And um, just we can stop giving ourselves such a hard time for doing it right or doing it wrong. Each moment is arising and self-releasing in this vast open intelligence. It's not, yeah, it's not coming from, you're not getting open intelligence, you're not losing open intelligence, you're gaining assurance that open intelligence is all that you are. And, um, yeah, that's such an easier way to live rather than limiting ourselves to conditions and um, 
contracts and all these kinds of things. So, yeah, it just, it's just such a relief to not be at the whim of positive, negative, or neutral. I, I just see it now as like, oh, uh, I don't feel so well, maybe I should look after myself, or I see something that's bringing a charge, let the data settle and see how I can actually contribute this energy. Like extracting that power, rather than, you know, just letting it take over and just push me around like a marionette. So definitely life becomes easier, more relaxed, yet more charged with beneficial potency. I don't feel I've become passive in, in any way. Um, I do like to still just take moments where I'm sitting quietly and just looking out at the landscape, but I could be anywhere and still relying on this, this quality of open intelligence, this essence, this um, peace and capacity to be of benefit to all. <laughs>